Okay, so my plan was to label this video the most important piece of photography gear I've ever purchased. Now, is that clickbait? Well, maybe a little, but I should clarify a little because it's not completely 100% true. Obviously, a camera is the most important piece of gear you need for photography. Any camera, not any specific format or brand or whatever. From a smartphone to a film camera to a, a, the most advanced mirrorless camera, it really doesn't matter. For me, Besides the camera, the most important piece of photography gear that I purchased has been an inkjet photo printer. I'm sure you've heard people talk about the importance of the photo print many, many times. You may be tired of hearing about the subject by now, but I still need to go over some of the key points and why I think the, the print is extremely important. I echo a lot of photographers that came before me in the feeling that a photo isn't finished until it's printed. So the print represents me completing that creative journey from concept and setting up the camera to the final image on that piece of paper that I choose. Obviously another big benefit to a print is that it's not relying on any technology. It's not relying on power to view it. It's not relying on any sort of uh, display. It's not relying on file format or compatibility or social media or anything like that. The print is self-contained and you can experience that, enjoy that, and share that with others and they can experience it as well without any need for outside um, elements. Another thing I really love about making a print is that it is a tangible, physical piece of artwork. It sounds obvious to state that because we all know what it is, but when you think about where we are in the digital realm and social media and smartphones and tablets and things where we consume almost all kinds of artwork digitally and not see any physical representation of them, having an art form like photography that we can go from a digital capture to a piece of, uh, a piece of physical art form is a pretty awesome uh, thing. It's a great opportunity for photographers to have the best of both worlds. You can create and share in the digital space, but then also print your work and have a tangible physical representation of what you've created. Yes, technically filmmakers and musicians can still kick out DVDs or CDs or vinyl and things like that, but the majority of people don't consume those art forms in that way anymore. The majority will stream movies off Netflix or um, HBO and will listen to music from Spotify or Apple Music or other services like that. Physical representations of those art forms are more rare than they used to be. So us photographers have a really cool opportunity to print our work and share that with others. Yes, of course, if you print a photo, you're, you're not gonna have the same audience that you would have if you put it on Instagram and get 10,000 likes. But it's, they're, they're two different experiences. The bottom line is it's nice to create a tangible, physical piece of artwork. But those are just some of the reasons why the print is important and special to me. I'll have plenty of opportunities to make more videos on that side of things. So besides the camera, the most important piece of photography gear I purchased is the photo printer, again. But the thing is, it's not one specific model of the photo printer. Yes, most recently I have purchased the Epson P700 and I love this printer so far, but this video isn't specifically about that model. This video is about a photo printer in general. So let's talk a little bit about my journey of, of printing my own photos and how I kind of landed at the P700. When I first started getting back into photography about, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, I already had a all-in-one printer from Canon that was a printer and scanner and I think even like a fax machine built into one that shows you how long ago it was. But um, my main thing back then was printing documents and papers and things like that. 
and then the occasional family photo from it, small four by sixes and whatnot. Um, but as I started to get more into photography, I was kind of curious about what I could do with that printer with the, photo with the photos I was taking with my DSLR. Um, I watched a few videos on photo printing and I tried a few things out on that printer and I was really impressed with the photos that even that little all-in-one printer could do. Canon makes a lot of great printers and, and, and even though this was a budget one, it kicked out some pretty, pretty good photos. But I've always been into black and whites and I noticed that I couldn't get the exact uh, richness in the black and whites from that one as I wanted to. But that all-in-one printer kind of just got me thinking about the expanding my printing capabilities. So I started looking for an, uh, a dedicated photo printer and landed on the Canon Pixma Pro 100, which I've made videos on on this channel. And that printer served me extremely well for about seven years. I printed everything from family photos on it to uh, my portfolio images on it to photos that I even displayed in some local art galleries as well. So I got a really, really good lifespan from that photo printer and uh, made the most of it. When I got that printer, I didn't know a ton about um, all the specs and all the difference between the professional photo printers, but I, I'm lucky I landed on that one because it was a great starter printer and it helped me learn about the process of, ink, uh, of printing photos on an inkjet printer. And then just recently, I decided I wanted to upgrade to something that had pigment inks and that was a little stronger with the black and white uh, prints. I did a lot of research and um, when I was ready to buy, I listed my old one for sale and found a local buyer that was a, another photographer just getting into photo printing and that fit his purpose perfectly. So I was really happy that my Pixma Pro 100 went to another photographer who was learning, getting started, and, and he'll be able to use that printer for a long time as well. So as I was researching for what my next printer would be, I uh, knew the black and whites were like my priority. That was the main thing. So I did a lot of research on what the best black and white printer would be in my budget. And from basically what I found is that the Canon Pro 300 and the Epson P700 and 900 we're all really, really close. I think uh, you could find people that will choose one over the other. I'll make another video uh, talking specifically about the 300 versus the 700, P700, and why I decided to go with the Epson. I know some of you have asked. And the bottom line is they're both great. You can't go wrong with either. I decided for me, based on a handful of factors, and some factors may not even make sense to you, but for me personally, the Epson P700 fit everything I was looking for. So that's my current photo printer, the Epson P700. So yes, from now on, all the printing videos and subjects I talk about will be based off that printer, but um, I love the Canon stuff. Who knows, maybe someday if I'm, if I'm printing enough and making enough money from my prints, I will have both brands and I'll be able to utilize the best of both worlds. Let's step away from the inkjet printing world for a second and talk about darkroom printing. Part of my journey during these past 10 years has been an intense dive into film photography, as much and if not m more than digital photography at times. To summarize a little bit of that journey, it started out as me getting a Canon Elon, shooting film on it, sending it out for processing, and learning a little bit that way. And then I went through the whole journey of processing the black and white film myself, and then eventually printing the black and white prints in the darkroom myself as well. So I was doing the whole process from capture to darkroom print with my black and white film photography. That darkroom portion of my journey was basically during COVID times, mostly the past two years. And I spent a lot of the first year and a half in the dark room whenever I had free time experimenting and learning and revisiting uh, stuff I had learned a little bit when I was younger, but I really had never dedicated that much time to dark room printing. It was something I had to get out of my system and really, really dive into and see to see what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, where it served me in my creative process with my photography. Just like a lot of people, I get inspired and learn from the masters like Ansel Adams. And three of my favorite photography books are the camera, the negative, and the print. 
And since we're talking about the print specifically in this video, uh, I'll reference a little bit of this book. This book, just like the other two books, talk about the art form in terms of what each uh, element, the role each element plays in the process, but it also talks about specific darkroom tactics and strategies and approaches. I am not a darkroom expert. I will not claim to be a darkroom expert, but I think I got to a point where I was good enough in the darkroom that I could see what it would take, what's required to produce what I want to produce. And I think if a lot of factors were different, being time, money, and resources, then I think I would have taken my darkroom printing to the next level and eat, go even further, make bigger prints, work with bigger negatives, and, and print uh, more often and all these things. But after doing a lot of research and a lot of self-evaluation and evaluation on my creative process and journey and where I want to go with my uh, photography, I've decided that investing in a high-end professional inkjet photo printer uh, was a better use of my resources and eventually my time. And I'll go into darkroom versus inkjet printing uh, at another in another video, but this isn't to say that one is better than the other flat out. This is just for me, what I get from a high quality inkjet printer on the photo papers that I choose um, is more important to me than the darkroom experience in and of itself. So like I said, I'll elaborate more on that later, but after doing a lot of research, experiencing the darkroom for a few years in an intense way, I've realized that this is my best path forward to produce what I want to produce. One of the things I really enjoyed with my Pro 100 and I have already enjoyed and I'm looking forward to enjoying more with my P700 is exploring different photo papers and at least exploring to the point where I find a, hand, a handful of papers, two or three, that are my go-to papers depending on the situation. And these are just some of the prints I've printed so far. Uh, some of Most of these papers are from Hannah Mula and they are, uh, some are Brida, some are pearl finishes, and each just has a slightly different look and surface to them. And what I'm doing right now is exploring which papers fit my style for the most part over other papers. Now, the, uh, the cool thing is with a printer like the P700 or the P900 or, or the Pro 300 or printers like this, with the inks that they have, along with papers like this, the prints you create, if treated right and if put behind UV glass or, or sprayed with a certain coating, can last hundreds of years. That archival quality to these prints was something very important to me. I know the realistic uh, the realistic element of that is that in a few hundred years, obviously we're all, we're all going to be gone and, and most people won't, won't care about your photos. But just the fact that I don't have to worry about these fading in 10 years is comforting to me. So having that archival quality, that archival element to these photos is extremely important. And obviously you can achieve archival quality prints in the darkroom, but just in general, the the difference in a darkroom print and a high quality inkjet print are so close and you could argue one is better than the other, I'm not going to right now, but they're so close that I don't see a huge benefit for me going darkroom over a high quality inkjet photo printer like I have. And I'm able to choose the papers I want I'm able to create the image I want, and I can print from scan film negatives, or I can print from a digital camera and end up in the same spot with the same quality, the same paper, and the same archival attributes. These are some of the other small prints I've made recently on my Epson. What I've done is just test out some papers and test out a few different 
a few different photos to see how they would look, testing out my workflow and whatnot. What's nice about printing photos on this small paper, like this is these are five by sevens here, is that I can print a whole bunch of five by sevens, get a feel of how a photo looks on paper before I invest in a larger sheet, wasting more ink on a, a bigger print. Um, and obviously I can print in color and black and white just as easily, although most of my work is black and white. And more recently I just picked up these four by six, uh, this four by six photo paper so I can print even more often and, and uh, keep this in a small container. And these are easily mailable so I can mail them out to eventually you guys. Um, we'll figure out a way to get you guys some prints. Whoever wants prints, I will get you guys some, at the very least, some small prints soon. But printing some small prints like that has done a few things. It keeps my printer active. So I'm printing often, which is very, very key, especially when you have a pigment-based printer. And it allows me to see a lot more of my work on paper, along with seeing it in Capture One or Lightroom. So I've established that printing is extremely important to me. The print is extremely important to me. But I realize printing isn't for everyone. Not all photographers even need to print. I don't think this is a necess necessity for all photographers. You could be an iPhone photographer that just shares an Instagram, and that's just as valid as someone who shoots completely film and prints their photos in the darkroom. That's the spectrum we're at now, and I think that's great. And you just have to decide what works for you, where you fall into that spectrum. You could be an iPhone shooter who sends your photos to get print, printed on a fine art paper, or you could be a medium format or large format film photographer that scans and shares it on Instagram. There's a whole bunch of different combinations, and having the final uh, piece of work on paper isn't for everyone. I don't claim it to be for everyone, as some people do. I think all of, everyone is a real photographer, just on the on the on different parts of the spectrum of photographer. That being said, even if you do value the print and want to start printing, exploring different papers and whatnot, investing in a photo printer isn't for everybody. Uh, it's it is a big investment and and not only for me is it the most important investment it is the investment that will continue to cost me money meaning that I'll have to buy paper and ink the your your camera will in theory cost you maintenance money if you keep it long enough and things like that but a printer is something that's ongoing uh with time and and money for me I felt it was worth it but it's not for everyone. But even if you don't print your own photos, there are tons of great services out there that will print your photos on the same paper that you're able to buy for your own printer and with archival inks and all the same positive attributes that you would get from a printer like this at home. So I value the final print, but if I couldn't print this myself, I would get it from a service uh, as long as I could as long as the work represented what I wanted and it was on the paper I chose and whatnot, the, the print is the most important thing. As digital photographers, most of our darkroom work is on the computer, right? So we've split up some of that process anyways. By the time you hit print on your computer, your creative work pretty much is done at that point. Choosing the paper and choosing the ICC profile on that stuff is the, like the final element. But even if you send it off to a printing service, you can specify the paper you want and those things. So your darkroom creative work is done on the computer anyways. So a printing service is just as valid as getting or investing in your own photo printer. So again, I share my journey as my journey is what fits for me. I hopefully it resonates with a few of you, but I know it's not the same for everyone. I think like what I said, about the spectrum of photographers and how you could be an iPhone photographer or a large format photographer and we could all end up here. We could all end up on the paper regardless of where the image originated or the technology that was used to capture it or the specs of that camera or whatever. It doesn't matter. So whether you're an iPhone photographer, Sony photographer, Fujifilm, Canon, Nikon, film, large format, whatever, 
you could all end up here. The print is also a meeting point, a final destination for all of us to to uh, uh, connect with each other. We, we can all make a print that feels and looks something like this. And I think that's one of the, the coolest things about the print. This is something we can all relate to and share. Uh, I've blogged recently about people getting so tribalism about specific brands or gear or formats and how uh, even with my small uh, YouTube world, uh, I can see how that happens. And you'll see it a lot of times where photographers brand themselves as a Canon photographer, or Fuji photographer or whatnot. And although I do use Fuji and I love Fuji, um, I'm not going to guarantee that I'll be a Fuji photographer five years from now. Who knows? But I will still be a photographer, and I will still be printing my photos. So those are the things we're always going to have in common. That's one of the most important things to me this year is finding these meeting points that all of us YouTube photographers and photographers can, in general can relate to and we can connect with. And hopefully my videos can find more and more uh uh, photographers of all brands and all formats and we can have more discussions about these kinds of things so we can all start at different places and all be at different places but there are there are points where we all meet and the print the final print the print on paper is one of those places and for me the high-end pro inkjet photo printer has been one of the most important piece of photography gear I purchased. So I appreciate you guys listening to all this. Um, as always, thanks again for watching and I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.